Hey everyone, welcome to Path to Wellness. My name is Chris and I'm very excited because we have a special guest, Jillian Berry, today. And she has been almost six years now as a raw vegan and she has a fantastic YouTube channel, one of my favorite ones. So welcome, Jillian. Thank you. I'm so happy you like the channel. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for being here. So we might as well get started. Um, I guess my first question is how and why did you get started uh, with the raw vegan diet? Tell yeah, us so... Absolutely. So I ran into a number of health problems after I had my first daughter about nine years ago. So she's nine and a half now. So after I had her, I was suffering from like ma so many problems, major digestive problems. Like I was either constipated or had diarrhea. I got to a point where there was even like blood in my stool as well. And I was having a lot of panic attacks, like severe panic attacks that would take me to the hospital. Like I was convinced I was going to pass away. It was like next level. And yeah, a lot of anxiety, depression, skin problems. I would feel so tired, just even tired if I walked up the stairs. So there were just so many things going on. And I, but so then I started going to doctors, especially with the digestive problems and stuff, and nobody could figure out what was going on. Some people were just like, you're a new mom, maybe you're just tired. And so I kept going to doctor's appointments. And then finally one doctor said, maybe you have celiacs, which is like a major allergy to gluten. It's not the proper definition, but you autoimmune issue with gluten. So I didn't know what that was when he said that I went home and realized, okay, maybe I'll try to take gluten out of my diet and see how I feel. So I didn't eat gluten, uh, for, I took gluten away right away. And within 24 hours, I felt a huge difference. Like I didn't even realize I had severe brain fog until like I removed the gluten and a lot of it left. And I was like, Whoa, I feel so different. Like my anxiety has gone. I just feel so different without the gluten. Um, but it didn't fix all my issues at all. But I was like, that's when I really started to realize how things affect me. And then I removed dairy and then I had a lot of skin clearing up going on and a lot of other things. And this really started my health path. So mm -hmm. I'd removed those things, but I was still trying different diets. So at one point I was even doing the blood type O diet because my blood type is O, like the oldest blood type. They say you should eat a heavy meat diet. So I was basically like almost carnivore, which is pretty crazy to think now. And I was, for me, it wasn't working. I was not healing. It was not working, but like my friends would come over and I would just give them a big plate of prime rib. <laughs> They're like, What is she doing now? Right. So I still wasn't healing. And then, but I was constantly researching like now for a while, like a few years, like health lifestyle, like foods, how they affect the body. And I read something by Dr. Sebi one night about living foods and about being raw vegan and how it can affect you. And I just thought, how have I never thought to try this? It makes so much logical sense. So the next day I tried it and literally I never felt so good in my whole life. By the afternoon of the first day, I was like, holy crap, like this is how I'm meant to feel. I've never felt this incredible in my life. My husband was even like, whoa, like this is crazy. You're so happy. You're so like, you're, I was like, I was coming to life. So I've been hooked ever since that was September 1st, 2016. And it's totally changed my life. Everyone around me saw how much it changed my life. Like I've dealt with no adversity with it here in Toronto and through work, through friends, through social settings, through anybody. Cause they can just see like in person, how happy, high vibe, like healthy and how much it's changed me. So it's totally changed my life. It's the best thing to ever happen to me. I thank God. I only wish that I discovered sooner. I think, imagine I had found this path in high school all the anxiety and depression. I wouldn't have faced all the blood sugar is issues, all the passing out from blood sugar problems, going to the hospital. And yeah, so it got rid of literally all my health issues, transitioning into a raw vegan. I, my digestion is perfect. My energy is through the roof. It's the main reason I do this. And just literally everything is really, really great. So yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> That's story, yeah. Okay, cool. I was, yeah, I was going to ask, um, did you have any, like with friends and family, did you get any pushback? But you kind of mentioned that you yeah. were, you were so healthy and vibrant that it doesn't sound like that was really a issue with you. No, that actually hasn't been an issue with anybody and nobody, my mom, um, my husband were, you know what we did separate a few years ago, which I've been very open about on my channel, but we're trying to reconcile. So I don't know what to label each other, but he does not eat like me. He's always been so supportive. Everyone's been so supportive. Some of the relationships fell away. Like people I used to go out with on Monday nights or the weekends, like drinking and having like pizzas and beers and like burgers and like that sort of stuff. We don't really connect anymore. I do love them, but, but yeah, I've dealt with no pushback at all in person. If anything, like in the, in the office I've worked at and stuff offices over the years, since I've been raw and stuff, even everybody I've noticed have like 
all of a sudden started juicing more and eating more like me because they can see in person like how vibrant and alive and happy I am. The only pushback and negativity I've ever dealt with from this lifestyle is YouTube. That's it. And oh, my viewers yeah. and my subscribers are like so amazing. Literally, I'm lucky to have like the best viewers ever. But just deal it like just like you know that there's some negative people. Obviously, that's the only place no. I've ever dealt with it. Oh, that's great. Okay. Wow. And then how do you, cause I know you're in Toronto. So how do you stay raw in the, with the cold weather? Do you have any tips for that? Yeah. I, I did yeah. a video on that too. Like I absolutely thrive. Even like I go to New York a lot when I could travel a lot and stuff when the borders were properly open, but I, um, like always am raw in Toronto, New York, wherever I am in the cold in the winter, just because I feel so amazing raw. So it doesn't bother me at all. And I feel like there's things to do. Like if you're eating the cold foods and it's winter, like just move around more, clean the house more, get moving. That really warms up your body. If you put things in the Vitamix and you want to make like a sauce for a pasta or something like that, if you put it on high and heat it up long enough, then it heats it up without like heating it to like a temperature that's like technically cooking it. And then if you mm -hmm. take some of your foods out of the fridge and let them sit at room temperature for a bit and then like mix the pasta, like it's not like freezing cold food then. And also like drink like room temperature water in the winter and things like that. Um, I have tried over the years having like a cooked lentil soup or something like that in the winters. And I just feel like dehydrated, more tired. My digestion gets screwed up. And I just feel like less like my, I feel so happy and vibrant and amazing raw. So I'm like, I'd rather just sometimes feel a little bit more cold and deal with it. You know, then it's yeah. like, I'm always out and about sledding, doing stuff in the winter. It's no big deal. Nice. Yeah. Someone, I heard someone else say one time they put, uh, to throw your clothes in the dryer and like get them nice and hot and then put your clothes on. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, so walk, like, what do you typically eat in a day? And like, can you walk us through that? And then do you typically start and stop eating at a certain time or, or how do you do that as well? Yeah. So right now I am trying to intermittent fast. So I've been doing that most days for a couple weeks now, and it's been like totally life-changing yesterday. I actually didn't do it. And I ate a little bit later and then I felt a bit more tired this morning. So mm. I have been starting to eat around between eight and 9 AM. And I've been having some watermelon because watermelon is in season now or a big glass like this big of freshly squeezed orange juice, which is really good. And so usually in the mornings I have just fruits, juices or green juices because I try to be super productive in the morning. I work on my YouTube channel and I just try to get so much done in the morning into the early afternoon when my kids are at school. So I feel like I'm most productive on like fruits and green juices and like really simple high vibe things. And then when it gets into the early afternoon, I have like usually I'll work out. I didn't today, but usually I'll work out between like 12 and one. And then after that, I'll have like a really big meal. So I'll make like a big raw vegan Caesar or today I had a soaked chickpea salad. So I soaked chickpeas and then I made like a Mediterranean style salad with like chopped parsley from the farmer's market, tomatoes, bell peppers, cucumbers, um, a little bit of sea salt, although I am going to cut sea salt, I think out again, but I don't know, but, um, stuff like that. And then some raw olives is really good. And then I had some dates after that. So I just, after I had the dates, I try not to eat too much dried fruit though. So I am not recommended dates. I'm only eating them a little bit the last couple of weeks, but I, I know like I, from what I've seen with everybody I've interviewed and stuff, a lot of fruitarians and raw vegans have run into dental problems when they've eaten a lot of dried fruit, specifically dates. And if I'm eating dried fruit, I do notice a little bit of sensitivity and I never have dental problems at all since being raw. So one tip that a lot of raw vegans have given me is to swish with water right after you have dried fruit. If you're going to have like dates or something, swish really good with water and then floss and like don't brush right after or don't brush mm -hmm. after having orange juice, things like that. Yeah. And I notice a difference with that. But yeah, so that's what I've been having lately. And I've been trying to stop eating around three. And then I notice a yeah. huge difference in how I feel when I wake up and like my sleep and everything. It's been really, really good. I haven't stuck to it religiously every day like this week, yeah. but it's been pretty good, but I switch up how I eat every week. I try to eat different things all the time. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm a huge fan of intermittent fasting. I've been doing it for like four or five years now. So. Wow. Yeah. What yeah, hours I, do you do? I, for, well, I've done, I've done everything you can think of, but lately, lately I've um, usually start eating around 1 PM and I'll stop around six or 7 PM. Yeah. I'll wow. go to bed around 10 or 11. So I do have like three to four hours before I go to bed, but yeah, I, I kind of do a little bit of a later schedule, but that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's really life changing. Eh? It's a huge difference. Yeah. And it saves a lot of time too, because you're not you're not eating all day long and stuff like that. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. 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 
And um, so what about like juice feasting or water fasting? Can you tell us your experience with either of those? I, and I know you've done some juice feasting. Yeah, so I have. I've never done a water fast. So I've always kind of wanted to try a water fast, even like maybe one, two, three day water fast. But mm -hmm. my kids are still pretty young. So I haven't done that yet. I think when they get older, I will. Although my friend on Instagram said the other day, like you still have so much energy just doing it for a couple of days. So I don't know. But I have interviewed people that have done it. It's pretty cool. It's, I'm pretty interested in it, but I've never done that. But I've done a 37 day juice feast before. So I did that in, I think it was 2019 or 2020. I forget which year. I think it was 2019. And it was an awesome experience. I felt really, really incredible. I never felt like so spiritual or connected to God. And like, like that was the main thing. I felt so connected and so incredible. And I drank a lot. I think that's why it worked for me. I think like I didn't let myself get hungry. I drank a lot of juice and I incorporated coconut water as well. Like I would buy cases of coconut water at Chinatown and then I would smash them, put them in big mason jars and have those in the fridge. And that really helped keep me on track too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I've done a couple of weeks, couple of weeks on juice and up to like three days on water, but I don't know. Have you heard of Lauren Lockman before? Yeah, I have. Yeah. He has a um, fasting center down in Co Costa Rica and I'm going to go down there one day and do like maybe like a 21 day, but yeah, I think that, and I think for like doing a water fast like that, I think going to a place like that is good. I think people have to be careful doing them. Alone. Yeah. I think supervised would be a good way to go about that. The longer one. Yeah. yeah Cause I remember I interviewed somebody, I think she did 21 days and I forget what it was, but I know she said at the end, like she was like, kind of even felt like she might like pass away or something. She's like, I don't know what's going on. So then like, yeah. made me think like people should really be careful doing those alone, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Okay. And then, so when you switched over to the, the raw vegan diet, did you have, did you experience many like detox symptoms or how did that go? Yeah. Was so that that's a great question for me. I actually didn't experience any detox and I know a lot of people do experience detox. The only time I've experienced detox symptoms has been on mono fruit cleanses or juice cleanses and experiencing like really a lot of emotional detox. So like traumas coming up and just like mm -hmm. things in life dealing mm -hmm. with like emotional detox, that's been like really tough to deal with on like a juice cleanse or a mono fruit cleanse for me. But I know when I transitioned, I felt incredible right away. And I didn't have like any of these negative symptoms and flare ups and things that people experience. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's good. Then you didn't have a lot of yeah. I heard yeah. with a water fast, a lot of that emotional stuff comes up too. So yeah, so. maybe because I've always like, I've incorporated a lot like fats too. I have done, but I have done phases where I've done no fats. I've done sometimes where like I've taken a month here and there where I've just eaten fruit and green juices to drink, just mm -hmm. eaten fruit. And then also green juices or things like that to take breaks from fats. Mm -hmm. But even then I didn't, even on my cleanses, I haven't experienced detox. I did do, uh, I did do enemas a few years ago. I think it was 2020 and I did release a lot of parasites. So then that led me into like a parasite cleanse slash detox. And that was pretty crazy. Like I, I was just like what the heck is coming out of me oh. when I did like the first uh -huh. enema, I was like, <laughs> but then enemas can be kind of addictive. I don't know if you've done them. Cause when you first start doing them, it's like, Whoa, you get this euphoric feeling after you release like these, this old waste or parasites and like these things. And then I think you can get addicted and do too many. I think that's bad for your microbiome and stuff. I, I don't think it's good to do too many. So I did them to cleanse. And then I went through phases where I did colonics and now I just kind of, I'm off it. I don't, I haven't, I would do it for a cleanse or now and then, but not very often. Yeah. yeah I've never done it. I've, I've heard some people uh, say that they don't recommend them. So I've just never yeah. done it. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I guess it'd be good though. Yeah. Um, so what about supplements? Do you, do you take any supplements or recommend any? Yeah, supplements? I do. These supplements are actually right in front of me. Cause I just did oh. a video. Cause I just had all my blood work tested at the doctor. That was going to be one of my questions is how's your blood? That was Oh, oh I'm so happy to talk about it. So I take these supplements. These are by compliment. So I can give you a link if you want. I have a 10% yeah. discount too, if anybody wants to get these. So what I, I've been taking these for like a year and I don't talk about anything on my channel unless I personally use and love it. I take these, they are all in one. So they have like D, B12, zinc, iodine, selenium, DHA, K, oh. like everything in one. Everything in one. Yeah. So it's like, but I was like, you know what? I want to get my blood work done because I had some blood work done when I was three years raw vegan. So yeah. this was in 2019. I'd been raw for three years and my B12 was low. So my B12 was only 92. 
And the range is one, I don't have it right on me, but it's like 130 something to like 700 or something, give or take. And I was 92. So mm. I had, I've been supplementing now for a while though. So I had my blood work done and now my B12 is 500. I think it was 550 or something. It was really good. So my blood work was perfect. I was really excited. The whole, all the blood work. And what's interesting, my blood sugars were perfect. We did the fasting blood sugars. Mm -hmm. And before I was raw, I had hypoglycemia. I used to pass out if my blood sugars were off and I used to get like, I need to eat or I'm going to faint like type of thing all the time. Wow. And my liver was perfect. My kidney was perfect. My vitamin D was in range and my, what else? And I live in Toronto, Canada. So I credit these for it being in range. Otherwise I don't see how it would be because it's the beginning yeah. of summer. I, I need to get more sun, which I love the sun, but it's, I haven't been able to travel this winter and, but summer's here now. So it's great. But what else? Yeah. Calcium was perfect. The protein was great. There was no bacteria, nothing in my um, urine that was bad. The iron was fine. Everything was great. So, and the doctor said, so I was like, can you summarize these results? What do you think about my diet? And these, cause he didn't know me. He's a medical doctor too. I didn't go to like a natural path or anything like that. And oh. he said, these are excellent blood test results. They're fantastic. And you should be proud of the lifestyle you're living. So I'm pretty happy about that. And my cholesterol was perfect as well. So I, I think that the cholesterol, if it's high, it's over 5.5. And I think mine was 3.6. And what was interesting, he said about 80% of people, their cholesterol is over 5.5. It's high. Yeah. So I, you mean, you mean to tell me you were getting enough protein? Yeah, That's I am. I get enough. Yeah. <laughs> I eat a lot of, I make sure I get a lot of plant-based protein because I was concerned yeah. about that too. It's like, you never know. Right. And it's like, six no, that, years that's like the number one question I get. And it's just like, yes, plants, fruits and vegetables have protein. It's just no, like, like I even called so the doctor. I called the doctor to, I made an appointment for a second visit for it's all, it's all done now over the phone. Now the, the results. So I made a second phone call and he was like, we already went everything. Is everything okay? Like your results were perfect or whatever. And I was like, I just want to make sure I'm getting enough protein. Right. Because you know, people say, and yeah, there, we went over the protein again. He's like, yeah, it's perfect. Everything's great. And there's no anemia and there's no like, you know, and I have a lot of fruit. I like consume a lot of fruit. I think there's just such yeah. a misconception around fruits, sugars, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's great to see like the blood sugars and like everything is great. So I was happy about that. And I just think no matter what somebody's diet, it's great to get your blood work checked, you know? For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I need to do that soon. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, so those are some of my main questions. Is there any other advice you have for someone maybe just like just hearing about this or kind of just getting started? Like, yeah. Any other thoughts or advice you might have? Yeah. I just Not think like, <laughs> I just think like, try it out and see if it works for you. Cause like I said earlier, it's the best thing to ever happen to me. It's totally transformed my life. It's transformed my sleep, my mental clarity, my energy, the most, my spiritual life. Uh, my digestion, just literally everything, my relationship. So I say, just try it out. Cause I know if it's had this impact on me, then I know I can definitely have this impact on other people and just make sure you're doing it right. I know people can get really carried away with the dried fruit foods, like the dates and the ma dried mangoes and dried stuff and dehydrated stuff like, you know, the gourmet foods and maybe mm -hmm. that, or like the junk foods, like you can even in raw find it, like, you know, the desserts, this and that. And that stuff's all great. And maybe that's great if that's the way for you to transition and that gets you into it. Cause I know some people, they transition that way and then they work their way into like eating more simple and clean. But for the long term, I think you're gonna run into problems if you're eating that way like all the time. And I think there's just a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And I don't think that's great to just eat like that all the time. But that's my opinion. And yeah, I don't know. I just say stick to it, give it like 30 days, see how you feel and see if it works for you. And I mean, keep in mind too, if you're somebody who drinks coffee or alcohol and then you try it and you don't feel great the first day, realize like the withdrawal symptoms of coffee and alcohol can be really intense and it can take a while to get that stuff out of you and just hang in there. Cause once you get through that and like get to the other side, you'll feel so good. And it can take time for our taste buds to change. And I just want to say too, like, don't be afraid socially of what people will think. Just put yourself first and like nurture yourself, love yourself first. And then the people who support you and love you will respect whatever you want to do for yourself. Wow. Thank you. This has been really great. Thanks so much for, for joining me today and the, all your informative information. And like I said, I'll have your, um, your channel linked in the description box. So we'll make sure everyone checks that out. And yeah. also the, the supplements, I like to check those out as well. Yeah, I do. send you the link. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
All right. Oh, well, yeah. maybe Thank sometime, you so much. Th yeah. Thanks again. And maybe down the road sometime we'll check back in with you and just see how things are going. Yeah, that would be awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks thank again. You. Okay. Bye. Have a good one. Yeah.